I'm good, chair. Thank you. Very Thank well. You. Mr. Kwase, are you fine? She's happy. <laughs> you have a, a spoke person lately. <laughs> okay. Mr. Shilin, are you okay? No, I'm okay, Chairperson. I'm okay. No, no, thanks so much, Put. All right. But, but not 100%. Until such time that new executives are getting what they deserve. Can you repeat that, Mr. Shalebe? No, I'm, I'm not 100% happy until military veterans get what I mean uh, they deserve. Okay, right. No, no, no. Thank, thank you very much. I think we, we shared that we shared that point, uh, Mr. Shalem. Now, uh, D, D, DM, you have listened to the. Con I have just allowed this conversation because I could get a sense that members wanted to 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 have a discussion rather than a, a question and the answer type of a session because. Uh, you, 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 you have work streams that are already processing the, the, the matters. So I then consider this as input into that process as well. And, um, and I'm sure it's, it was beneficial. I thought it was beneficial indeed. I mean, the question that Mr. Kwasi, for example, Mr. Kwasi raised it was not in my mind. And, uh, and I'm happy that the, 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 the teacher says, uh, men, this requires, um, you know, a further examination. I was happy with that. Right, DM, you've listened to the discussion. And uh, please, your final comment uh, before we, we thank you uh, and the team. Honorable Chair and honorable members, uh, thank you for the uh, comments, observations registered by the committee this morning. Uh, Chair, the uh, probing questions by honorable members are, are helpful to uh, put the spotlight on uh, a number of uh, areas where solutions must be uh, verified. Uh, and uh, we should uh, establish certainty about uh, what is, is that we are saying is going to happen. Uh, I will just briefly touch on a few of the areas that were touched by members. There is something which uh, Honorable Member Shilembe raised about the database and Military Veterans Association and the South African Cape Corps. I did not get the point exactly what it is. Um, Honorable Member Shilembe was uh, uh, concerned about, uh, and uh, I'm unable to respond to that, even as I feel it is an important matter or an aspect that uh, he was drawing our attention to. Let me just move on to say that uh, the issue of housing just for clarity, uh, it is the case that uh, the Department of Military Veterans is delivering houses to military veterans through the Department of Human Settlement. And uh, the Department of Human Settlements in the provinces, the provincial departments of human settlements. Uh, and therefore, the delivery of housing has uh, challenges of uh, uh, coordination between DMV and the provincial housing departments. Uh, and largely, the challenge has been that uh, the Department of Military Veterans uh, was alleged not to be providing the name list of the beneficiaries on time. And as a result, there would even be projects where units are released, but uh, there would be lack of information from the Department of Military Veterans as to who the recipients of those units should be. So there is that problem. Uh, just to say to Honorable Member Shilembe that uh, um, the Department of Military Veterans does not have the capacity to take responsibility itself for projects of building houses for these military veterans. We don't have that capacity. We don't intend building that capacity 
because it's just going to be an onerous responsibility for the department to take over. So we deliver these houses through human settlement in the provinces. And yes, of course, uh, for as long as in the province, in the majority of cases, this is what we are talking about. There are no projects, housing projects in the different municipalities. There will be no houses for military veterans. That is the logic. Um, because uh, these housing units we have for military veterans, we have them within the projects, the housing projects that are there planned in the provinces and in the areas where the province itself has decided to have housing delivered. So that is why even the, the flexibility of taking these housing units to military veterans where they are needed, it's not as uh, flexible the, uh, on the part of DMV as uh, uh, it would they have been uh, ideally uh, uh, served military veterans. So we provide them where there are housing projects in the provinces. So they are, it's set, set aside for military veterans in the housing that is happening in the provinces. The point about housing that we must just underline, of course, is that uh, part of the things that we should be uh, working on is to face out the need for the Department of Military Veterans to transfer this top up to the Department of Human Settlements in the provinces, because uh, in practice, these units are built and completed even before the Department of Military Veterans forward the top up, uh, you know, uh, uh, amount to the uh, the delivering agents, which is the Department of Human Settlements in the provinces. So it is clear that uh, we can find a way in which uh, there is no transfer of any top ups. The, the human settlement departments in the provinces should just build the houses according to their specification, and we find a way in which money is moved from the budget, from the budgets away must, from the department of military. Build, they must build and build you. Exactly. Build, and we must make sure that the money goes directly to them, it does not become part of the budget of military veterans because it creates unnecessary administrative work. Uh, and that is why there are years where the Department of Military Veterans would sit with the money and spend because there has been no claims from these uh, provincial departments of human settlements uh, when actually they have delivered uh, uh, houses. So it is that uh, administrative, you know, uh, fine tuning of delivery that the management of DMV should, uh, you know, spend time in clearing and working on. Moving on, comrade, uh, I'm sorry, honorable chairperson and honorable members, I wanted to touch on just the issue of. Um, uh, the pension at a high level. To just profile this, uh, that uh, this pension, uh, honorable members, it's a pension, military pension, that will only be provided and targeting military veterans who were members of the Liberation Armies, the non-statutory forces military veterans, the statutory forces military veterans of yesterday will not be getting this pension. And there is a clear logic to it. Because military veterans who were in Sadaf, who were in the TBVC state armies, as part of their employment condition, they, they had a pension that they would have left the system with. So to offer them a pension again through this instrument would uh, actually create the, uh, you know, double TP. So this military pension is intended for the military veterans from the non-statutory forces because they were not gainfully employed and did not build pensions for themselves when they were in service. But uh, even in relation to them, it is only those who are not receiving 
the special tension because some of these military veterans from the non-statutory forces applied successfully for a special pension and they are recipients, they are recipients of a special pension. If they were to get this military pension, of course, it would create a situation where it can be argued that they are benefiting twice. And it is for that reason that the policy of this pension says, if a military veteran from the non-statutory forces receives a special pension, he will only be entitled to get this military pension where there is a, a, um, where there is a, a gap between the amount of the special pension that he is getting and what the military pension provides. He will be able to get the difference if what he is receiving as, uh, from his special pension is below what the military pension uh, uh, offers them. So that, in short, is the cohort of military veterans who are going to be the beneficiaries of this military pension that we are talking about. The point, Chair, that we are talking, you raised, and rightfully so, about uh, what is the situation in relation to this pension where military veterans uh, have already passed on. Is this pension going to be available to beneficiaries, dependents of these military veterans? Now, here is the catch. The catch is that every legislation as a matter of convention that is brought into force, it is never done retrospectively. If this military pension was to be implemented retrospectively, then the population, the numbers of beneficiaries would not be the 1,500 that you're talking about. The number will be huge, and depending on how far back we go in years, we are going to have a, a different, uh, you know, a figure to work on. And the budgets, of course, will therefore, you know, uh, 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 increase. So uh, our understanding is that, like all legislation, uh, it is never the intention of legislation when it is introduced to apply retrospectively that this would also not be a, an, a, an exception. It is for that reason that there is therefore political pressure that we must make sure that we do everything firstly to finalize the verification of military veterans so that those who qualify for these benefits are loaded expeditiously but also that this pension must be paid out as soon as possible. Because the longer we take a month, a week, somebody dies, and he is going to be, his dependents are going to be deprived of the opportunity to receive this pension. Uh, that's what uh, I, I thought I should just, you know, highlight. In relation to housing in, the, in KZN, I would request the committee without you know uh, endorsing what the dg is saying that uh, you know uh, the interactions that my office is having with the provinces uh, is going to assist to endorse that uh, you know that is the responsibility of my office because it to be it will be tantamount to um, delegating upwards uh, but I propose that uh, we come back to the oversight committee after we have been to KZN. Our visit to KZN has been put, you know, uh, pushed back, pushed back uh, because of uh, um, things that interfered with our plans. But uh, the reason why KZN has been behind all of the nine provinces is what we are unable to explain. I'm not happy with the information that I have, 
I've had uh, some explanations from the officers of the department, but they're not adequate. They're not adequate to explain the phenomena of KZN. And I would appeal that you just give us time. Uh, we'll be going to KZN uh, soon on this particular matter. Uh, what I know is uh, that the, in KZN, there is also the housing is impacted upon by the verification. Uh, of uh, military veterans. There are a lot of military veterans who are not on the database because verification has not been provided there and it is impacting on housing. There are people who need houses, they are not on the database and therefore procedurally cannot get houses. And so we are, we are get, we got caught up in our own, you know, uh, um, you know, tardiness uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a department. Uh, but uh, as I am saying, uh, we would be able to explain what the challenges are, but most importantly, what is it we have agreed with the province to put in place in order to get the province to catch up with the rest of the other provinces with respect to housing. Chair, I beg to step down uh, at this point, with that shared, I mean, said, but uh, the comments and the remarks of the committee, uh, they have been noted, and we'll make sure that uh, we take them on board in the work that we do going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, DJ. There was a lot of information shared today, useful information, and uh, thank you so much. And uh, Coincidentally, we are all on the same uh, page and um, uh, we're discussing matters and we agree that, um, I mean, we need to speed up the process uh, to deliver uh, the services, uh, long-awaited uh, long uh, services to the military uh, veterans. I think they've been patient uh, with us and uh, uh, so uh, I think I don't want to um, spoil the discussion. It looks as though we, we, we've diagnosed the problem very well. And uh, the plans are being um, formulated uh, to address the problem. Uh, but if we don't time ourselves very well when we want to have finalized the plans and start the implementation, we'll delay the process unnecessarily and, uh, and then cause further uh, more frustration uh, on the ground. We seem to have done diagnosed it very well. We seem to be on the right path. And um, I think we need to now get to the you know to 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 the end um, of the process so so that um, because it's then that people will start to see um, the fruits of all these discussions uh, I know I'm happy with with the discussion colleagues I think your 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 contributions I'm sorry that at times I was uh, trying to uh, you know, uh, it constrained you a bit, but the gist of what you were saying um, was recorded. Uh, both the DM and the DG have uh, correctly articulated on, on them, and uh, I, I don't think we would, there would be any complaint. Uh, I think we are all clear as to where we are going. DM, we are left with two minutes. Uh, you are Good two hours to deal with the, to deal with these matters. I'm happy. Uh, I think we I can discharge you now from the from the platform. But of course, when you think you it's 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 it's, it's okay for you to leave, uh, let me say you are welcome to do so. Thank you very much, DM. Uh, thank you very much, DJ. Please. DM, your uh, part short. Um, honorable okay. chairperson and honorable members, uh, once again, uh, thank you for um, 
uh, your guidance. Thank you for your advice and uh, your sharp eye for uh, the weaknesses uh, that uh, need to be attended to uh, by the department and the ministry. Uh, we do undertake to um, work very hard to bring about an improvement in the environment around military veterans. We do actually, you know, promise that uh, uh, you will, you know, soon, I think, uh, see uh, the fruit of your uh, long deliberations around these issues of military veterans. Uh, with that said, uh, Chair, once again, thank you very much. No, sir, Bong. Say, say, no, Hamburg, I think I'm not saying Hamburg, the DM and, and the DG. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can then uh, move to the next item. Um, Le uh, Croise uh, asked to be excused at uh, 12. Uh, I've granted her because she has another uh, important uh, matter to attend to. All right, uh, colleagues. Now let's consider the report. This is the report of the oversight visit to the to Houting, and um, that was led by uh, uh, Comrade uh, Tabo. Sorry, Honorable Tabo Mote. So I expect Tabo and the team to lead uh, on this. Uh, Peter, uh, please flight the thing and you talk to us. I'm not sure if it's going to be Peter or Venom, but one of the two. Uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning, members. Uh, I'll be doing the presentation, Chair. You'll be doing it. Sharp. Okay. I welcome you to do so. Uh, Chair, is the presentation clear? Uh, the screen is still black, pitch black, but it's uploading. Not yet. Or oh, there it is. Now I can see the presentation, uh, Peter. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, members. As you are aware, this report is around uh, seven pages long. Chair, and, and with your permission, I will only highlight uh, certain aspects given that members were on the oversight visit, as well as us having distributed the document. This is basically a collaborative effort between myself, Brian, and William. In the first section, we're just uh, introducing uh, uh, introduction, saying the way we went. Um, and then the second one, we're just saying what, were the, uh, what was the primary aim, is that was to acquaint the committees of the conditions and the challenge experience, as well as to facilitate inputs and insights to, the, to enhance its oversight function. Next is the members that uh, went on the oversight visit, uh, Mr. Mutley, the delegation leader, and then there's the support staff. Um, next, at uh, the top of the next page is all the officials that were involved. Um, 1.3 is the program. First, we went to Girotech. Um, and then to Centurion, and after that, we went to the Nels Littleton campus. On Friday, we went to the Special Forces School in Murray Hill, and we concluded with the visit to the Department of Military Veterans Headquarters. So if we look at uh, point two, the, HA, um, the oversight visit to Arms Force facilities, um, we started off at Geotech, and then we were welcomed there by the chairperson of the board, Dr. Philip uh, Dexter, as well as the CEO, and then we have uh, a presentation by Dr. Makaza. Um, the first facility that we visited was the Genotech uh, Test Facility, which is a multidisciplinary organization providing accredited independent test and evaluation services. Next are some of the income generating divisions, um, the two support divisions, and then they listed the various challenges. And then that was followed by the observations by, uh, and questions by members. And the first question was whether other state entities are also using the facility. The answer was yes, but not clearly not enough. The second question related to how the market competitiveness is, is maintained. 
and they say that they do make it available to various uh, facilities uh, and other institutions, but obviously not enough, given that they are still struggling uh, 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 to be competitive. The next question related to whether um, any of the South African defense industries companies uh, are, are using Jagotech, and that was responded in the positive. Um, there was a question about the land, not all the land on the facility being utilized, and if they could, and if they had the funds, they would have uh, 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 expanded on that. Um, the next question related to their engagement with the metropolitan uh, municipalities. They are in discussion with some of them, but they are saying they should actually extend it further. A problem that we've also encountered in the Special Forces School and during our oversight visits is the land occupation around Geotech, and then the questions asked what they were doing about it. Um, the next one was whether the East African Police Service are using the facility and say yes. They are using it for the VIP training training, but there is a lot of scope for, for uh, to, to extend it further. Next, Dr. Makaza then discussed the DARIS, the Defense Evaluation and Research Institute. The first one was uh, the Pro Technic Laboratories, and this is basically uh, where they conduct project work in the field of chemical and biological defense. They discussed the successes, the challenges, the mitigation, and the next area was the ergonomics technology. They are basically providing comprehensive service in ergonomics, occupational health and safety, both locally and as well abroad. The next one was the HAZMAT, Hazardous Materials Protective Systems. They basically manufacture and market a comprehensive range of respiratory uh, products. And they've also then been supplying full face masks, chemical and biologic warfare filters, et cetera, to the Department of Defense. The next one was Flamengo, it's Fluid and Mechanical Engineering Group. It's basically managing modeling and simulation capability for the DOD. Um, and then there were observations by the committee members. And the first question was whether there's cooperation and competition between uh, ARMSCO and the CSR and Danel. And I said that many times they are mostly working together, but that obviously ARMSCO is focusing on the military. The next one related to Ergotech, um, especially with regards to the problems that we've also noted it, um, with the boots. And I said, yes, they are assisting them, but at the end of the day, they can only provide guidelines for the department to purchase uh, these, 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 these products. Next also, they say they also assist them with recommendations or specifications for the type of boots to be used. Um, but at the end of the day, it is not them producing it, they have to go out and manufacture it. The next question was uh, concerned by one of the members um, that given that Ergotech, for instance, is working with the confidential information of, of, of members of the Defense Force, whether this information is, uh, information is being kept confidential, and they stressed that indeed they are keeping it confidential and that all the scientists are being vetted. With regards to Peritechnic, the question asked was to what extent the chemical and biological warfare is still a threat and whether this capability is, uh, is still justified. And the response was that yes, it is justified because uh, it's basically a unique capabilities and a skill set in the entity, and it speak to the sovereignty and strategic independence of the country. The next question related to some of the reasons as to why they are losing scare skills, and they said that the scientists are in demand, and, and sometimes they feel they get poached by entities such as Prasha and Transnet and the private sector. Next, we went then to, uh, on a site visit to the Nell Littleton campus, we went there to uh, a hangar, and where we've uh, so where the Peja infantry vehicle is basically uh, assembled, we then had a briefing by some of the engineers and the personnel involved in Project uh, Ufaista. They've then shown us various components of the Peja and told us that it takes about 1,200 hours to, to complete a single uh, system. And then they've showed us there were about 15 badges a system that have gone through the assembly stage and are partially uh, complete and operational. We also had to look at the training simulators where uh, the drivers are getting training on this. And then we also had to look at the parts storage facility um, where some of the space and components uh, for the better are stores. And the committee was then informed that the parts had been in storage in excess of five years. Next was a presentation by DLS, the Nell Lane System. Um, first, they just looked at the 
the, 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 the manpower and how that actually decreased from May 2020 uh, from 476 uh, in manpower and to December 21, there were around 263 uh, engineers, uh, scientists left and with a reduction of 213 uh, since May 2020. Next, I just list us the uh, business risk um, and also what the mitigation was. And they gave us an overview of Project Infaster. And then on the question on, 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 on the development schedule, they also uh, uh, indicated to us what they can do. For instance, with the uh, five budget variants, they said, with uh, the section variant, ARMSCO is still doing internal processes, which impact on the conclusion of other variants. So the vision paper has been with ARMSCO since March 2021. The fire uh, support the variant, they said they will take about three to five months. Uh, missile variant, 14 to 18 months to complete. The command variant, eight to 12 months. And the mortar variant, between 10 and 14 months. And they explained to us the uh, product uh, production phase overview. And then the capability to the to deliver, uh, but more importantly was why they think they should actually continue with Project Roof Easter. Firstly, said the South African Army is to support the South African Arm Army to fulfill its constitutional mandate to the deployal capability, to reposition South Africa in the world as a force to be reckoned with in the defence sector, sustainability of the NAL capability base to support SNDF maintenance of its fleet and major contracts. The already developed level of ballistic projection, protection, mobility, and firepower already far exceed that of the aging rattle. And upgrading of the rattle as an alternative will face major obsolescence issues, making it a lengthy and expensive uh, alternative. And the next was retention and creation of jobs and stimulation of the economy, and enhancement of skills in science, defense, technology, and engineering in next and then the sustainability of local defense sector and the establishment of the triple B, double E suppliers. The way forward, they've explained to us that there need to be a meeting between the NEL CEO, arms CEO, and the Secretary uh, for Defense to advise on moving the program forward. AMSCO then was given an opportunity to, to respond to the presentation of the NEL, um, and then the, um, the acquisition and supply chain management manager Mr. Tefu, he responded and he said, in a letter uh, in 2018, Danelle noted that they are unable to meet all the specifications of the project of the contract. Subsequently, after a number of occasions, there was a proposal to move forward, but some capability gaps remain. It was also agreed by both arms and Danelle that phase one has not been completed and the challenges remain uh, include the fact that a 30 millimeter gun was not fully developed, that the gun's accuracy remained the problem and the smoke attackers did not work effectively. And the NL is therefore not able to deliver on Project Uvesta according to timelines and system requirements. Then there were various questions and observations by the uh, members. And the first one related to why the NL was actually unable to finalize the project specification. And then the NL CEO uh, explained to us that in the past, some decisions were taken on that were outside the scope of the project. And then there are various other explanations that they gave to us. So if I can move over to the oversight visit to the Special Forces School on Friday morning, the 22nd of, of April. Um, the presentation there was led by uh, Colonel Jerry Mohorosi, the Brigade's Logistics Senior Staff Officer, in the absence of the General Officer Commanding who was attending another function. His presentation basically um, covered the strategic profile, the mandate, vision, and mission, their role and function, the state of the infrastructure and facilities, again, the encroachment of the informal settlements, um, and also the issue of land claims, and their serious uh, infrastructure and living, living accommodation challenges, the road infrastructure, and as well as the encroachment um, we also uh, poses a security risk to the bases. And then there was a the critical success factor, and basically they are planning to, to build a state-of-the-art facility. The strategic and administrative challenges were also listed, and then there were observations and questions by members. And the first question then related to the state of the equipment and the kind of equipment that they require. 
given that uh, uh, this some of these deal with intelligence or conf confidential information. And then also a question around the air support that they require. We all know the problems that the South African Air Force is having um, with the flying hours. Um, then also they wanted to know what they actually been doing with regards to the problems in relation to accommodation. And then the committee also needs to be prioritized um, in the kind of in intervention that's required. So there must be a discussion between the committee um, and the SANF and the Special Forces, what is required and what should be done. And then the issues of water and electricity and the land claims should be addressed. Um, they were also asked whether there is actually a multi-party platform, given that there are various departments, entities, municipalities involved. Um, and given their restricted budget allocation and how it impacts on the activities, we ever asked them, you know, what can they actually do with what they have? There were also problems um, expressed with regards to the supply chain management, the procurement challenges. Um, and also what they've been doing to address the electricity and the water supply challenges. And then also with regards to the informal uh, settlement um, and given the challenges that they have, that the water is being intercepted by the local communities there. And I have also questions around the land invasions and the military facilities across the board. And also whether this plan to expand uh, or build a, a state of facility of state of art the facility at the school where it's actually been approved by the military council. And then lastly, after the presentation, we went uh, um, to the urban fighting uh, facility. We had a look at that. And then after that, we went to the four reserve vehicle park. We, we also saw um, where the, 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 the electric cables have, have been stolen along the fence of the VVRP. And then the oversight visit to, to the DMV headquarters. Um, this is the last part of the uh, oversight visit, the Friday afternoon. Uh, we were welcomed there by the DG. And then there was a presentation uh, on, about the headquarters and especially related to the lease that expired already in November 2018 and has since been leased on a month-to-month -month, uh, basis. Also with regards to provincial officers, how they're actually being capacitated and also information about the expiry and the renewal of the various lease agreements. There was also a reference to the call center, and they said that they basically have an agreement, a service level agreement with CETA that's actually assisting them to develop this. And then questions um, for the DMV is, is, the first question was whether the department is actually enjoying legal protection if they do not provide the 11 benefits as provided uh, in the Military Veterans Act. We had no clear uh, 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 response to that. The second question related to the whether the housing benefits actually include the assistance with the removal of asbestos, and the response was there basically in, in the negative. The next one um, is that um, they should actually assist the military veterans to access the military, uh, the medical benefits, and we know what they told us before, that they are trying their level best to do that and, and ease and smooth the, 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 the access to medical facilities. And then there was a school uh, a, a concern raised about the school benefit um, to the school fees that are, that, that are being paid, and especially, for instance, in the case of disabled children. And the next one just related to the, the continued lack of progress to clean and finalize the military veteran database. Uh, once again, this concern was, was expressed and we've heard today that they are going around the country with the verification process uh, with the uh, presidential task team. And then pertinent questions were also asked around the, the fact that the headquarters lease had expired at the end of November 2018. Um, and it was asked why it's now being done on a rental basis, because obviously this is a lot more than if you have a fixed um, uh, uh, rent agreement. Um, the next one was then also asked who is actually the owner of the building. It was indicated that it's being owned by NMI Group Limited. Um, and then there was a question of access um, to the DMV headquarters. Um, because they've raised concerns that members of the public can basically just walk into the building. Um, the next one was also around the vacant senior management positions, and we've heard 
um, that they are busy uh, 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 dealing with that. Um, and then soon, hopefully, uh, this disciplinary process will be completed. The next one related to the building not being secured um, as it poses a security risk both to, to, to the employees and the visitors there. And we wanted to know what the impact was actually on the core business of the department. The last one related to the function of the call center. And the question was whether it's fully staffed and operated optimally to assist military veterans with queries. So the last part is just the recommendations or the proposed recommendations by the committee. And the first one was about the lack of adequate military uh, uniform and boots. And then the committee recommends that the DOD calculate the requirements in this regard and shift funds in the 2022 adjustment budget to address the problem. The DOD should report back to the committee during deliberations on the adjusted budget for 2022-23. And Arms Corps Economic Division should also be consulted to ensure the appropriate uniform and food way are procured for the SENDF. The next one related to the switching of, of, of uh, uh, assets. And we heard last week what the minister had to, to say about this. The first one to put it on hold. So I'll pass that one, Chair. Um, with regards to the NEL project, Goof Easter, um, the committee observed at this juncture between the views of arms with the NEL and the prospects. And so the committee then uh, recommended urgent engagement between arms Corps, the NEL and the SENDF on the future of the project. Arms Corps should report back to the committee in writing not later than 21 July 22, and the outcome of such engagements and the way forward with the project. With regard to Special Forces Brigade and the school, the first one was the impact of the human settles around, uh, uh, around the military base, and the committee then recommended that the DOD and other relevant departments work together to find a lasting solution to land invasions around military bases. The DOD should also provide updates in its annual report, starting with the 21-22 annual report, and progress in this regard with a detailed breakdown of affected areas and relevant engagement to address the matter. The next one related to areas of the SNDF uh, being subjected to a land claim process, and then the recommendation is that the DOD should, in subsequent annual reports, provide a more detailed breakdown of the specific bases and military areas under land claim and the progress on this specific claim. The next one related to the special equipment requirements by the special forces, where the committee recommended an engagement between the DOD, Department of Trade and Industry, National Treasury, and the establishment of a permanent, a reasonable departure or a special dispensation for foreign procurement of specialized equipment unique to the special force environment. The DOD should prioritize this engagement and provide feedback on its outcome to the committee during deliberations on the adjusted budget for 2022. The next one related to non availability of water and electricity at several uh, military bases, and the committee recommends the urgent intervention from the DOD, ESCOM, and the city of Chuane to address this matter. The DOD should report in writing to the committee on progress in this regard no later than two months after the adoption of, the pro of this report. Should a permanent solution to the repair of electricity lines not be possible, the DOD should consider the use of solar and or other power generation as, as an alternative means to supply, uh, to supply uh, the units in the area. The next one is that the committee also recommended that in order to process the issues of the Special Forces Brigade, the committee should convene a close meeting with the senior management of the DOT to deal with the challenges faced by Special Forces. With regards to the DMV headquarters, um, firstly, that the committee recommends that the DMV should prioritize the delivery of medical benefits to military veterans as members continue to receive complaints in this regard. We must also stress that the bursaries for school fees should be announced, especially in the case of disabled children, as challenges in this regard from the DMV side further complicate an already challenging situation. The second one is that the DMV should, during the third quarterly meeting with the committee, report specifically on the DMV headquarters and in particular what they have done to address the situation as the first lease has expired in November 2018. They should also report on all leases for provincial officers and also whether these officers are functional and fully staffed. They should explain what they are doing in the interim to make sure that the 
game headquarters are more secure given the security risks that the building pose. And lastly, the DMV was encouraged to further enhance the call center and actively improve awareness of the call center amongst military veterans, given the reported challenge to access the DMV headquarters and provincial offices. Progress on the finalization and improvement of the call center and the integrated data management system should be reported to the committee during the third quarterly meeting. Lastly, Chair, the committee just expressed uh, it's gratitude to the older personnel from Arms Coordinator, the Special Forces School, as well as DMV Ed Course for their cooperation and sharing the challenges with the committee in an open and transparent uh, manner. And the committee also extends appreciation to members of parliament and the committee show pass, st support staff who made this oversight visit possible and sure that it was successful. Thank you, Chair. Uh, well, look, thank you very much for the job well done. Uh, Daniel, you've done uh, very well. Uh, it's, I, I convey that to you and, and the team that you are working with. All right, colleagues, um, uh, I present this report to you. Uh, let me just check if there are any corrections or misrepresentations that you may want uh, to be dealt with before I move it for adoption, or I present it for adoption or accept. Mr. Murray, if your hand is up. So this, yeah, uh, I mean, it's again a fantastic report. There are just two matters that I was wondering whether one can add that to the way forward. Um, the, the one was a something that was forthcoming from um, Bullet, uh, under 7.3 Special Forces Brigade, the, the second last bullet that deals with the electricity, water, and, uh, you know, uh, and the extreme conditions and the, and the concerns that we had. Um, whether we can recommend or uh, whether we can request the, the Department of Defense to give us feedback on how the... the um, not availability of electricity is affecting the storage of our vehicles and equipment um, because if they are not kept in a in a, a rapid response condition, it might impact on our defense readiness. Um, because my knowledge is that those stores at Valmansdal and other places as well, but specifically Valmansdal where there's a concern. The, the, the vehicles and the equipment is, is stored under, under an ideal um, uh, climatical condition that they don't need to be serviced before they are rapidly uh, employed and utilized. But if there are not electricity that can, that can basically power that system to make sure that that, is, that might impact heavily on our readiness. So if we can just maybe add that, uh, I'll be appreciative. And then the second one on the NEL and arm score. Um, we have talked about that many times about the future of the NEL. Um, although it is only mentioned here, you know, the future of the NEL must be must be sorted out. But I think the one thing that that we have talked about is, you know, that the NEL should come back to the Department of Defense. Um, and that is not necessarily in the report in so many words. And I'm just wondering whether we can embark on a process um, because quite clearly the Minister of Public Enterprises has got a total different view than the Minister of Defence and the NEL has got a different view than an arms corps and eventually it's the Department of Defence and the SNDF that is, that is basically biting the bullet. Um, and somehow, I was just wondering whether we can start with um, a process to to see whether which divisions of the NEL we essentially require, and that can be moved or, or integrated with arms corps, um, as as we've mentioned in the past. Uh, it's not explicitly like that in the report, and I was just wondering whether we can be more brave in identifying that as a as a, as a discussion point taking forward. Will, will we not be encroaching with the executive uh, function? 
assuming what you 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 take from Dinel to Armscom is key for the survival of Dinel at least in the meantime. Uh, you see, will it that not be fatal? To I don't know, but um, I, I I don't know. Uh, they were discussing the the, the thing. And the two issues are raising is one, um, the conditions under which those vehicles are kept, whether they, are, they require uh, electricity, and, um, and then the second one is this issue that you are raising. Let me hear what other members have to say. Remember, we're discussing your, your findings, colleagues. Uh, I cannot see the thing. Please comment, yeah. colleagues. We are discussing the findings yeah. and, and and what you are recommending. Yeah. Uh, Tabo, uh, is that is that is this your hand? No, no, chair. But uh, I I I can comment. I think uh, uh, the report has uh, been well drafted and uh, captured. Uh, uh, issues uh, as uh, they develop uh, developed in those uh, engagement that we had with uh, various uh, entities, uh, and and for me, I'm not sure on the issue that uh, Honourable Murray just uh, deposited now. Uh, of of course, we we have raised our concern. Uh, quite a number of times on the issue of uh, Dinel. Uh, and we have given them, I think uh, it's part of our recommendation uh, that uh, they must uh, both Dinel, DOD and AMSCO, uh, out of what they have presented to us, they must come back and report to us uh, somewhere uh, I think it's next month or this month. We have given them three months, uh, on particularly on the status of uh, 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 project roof there. Uh, how how are they intending to go about it? Taking into consideration that it is never our intention or our will that uh, uh, Dinel must just collapse. Uh, 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 in in the interest of uh, 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 DOD uh, project who face there, but a a formidable solution should be sought uh, that would not uh, contribute to uh, uh, the demise or ultimately liquidation of Dinel because uh, we need we still need those capabilities uh, we must put our our energies our heads together and see how how best can we we save Dinel uh, taking into consideration that uh, uh, part of our view is that Dinel is uh, 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 dislocated it must be under under DOT uh if possible those uh, those capabilities uh, can be taken back to amsco because i'm told previously amsco was uh, also uh, uh responsible for production not only acquisition only so those are the discussions that we can engage on at the later stage but for now the report i think has captured uh, uh, our findings and recommendation very well. Thank you. Uh, can I hear um, any other comment? Colleagues, please shout. Chairperson, okay, can I just respond to uh, Arnold Mutley? Yes, just, just, just hold, let me just check if okay. there's any other comment. I'll come back to you, Mr. Murray. Is any other comment, colleagues? Please shout if you. You, you, because I cannot see your hand uh, on this side. Okay, doesn't look like there's any other hand. Mr. Mara, you wanted to to comment? 
Yeah, I think what the Honorable Moodley said about the NEL and, and ARM score is absolutely 100% in, in line with my concerns. Um, yes, we can wait for the 21st of, of July when they need to respond, report back to us. Um, but I think it's as long as we as a committee just, just identify that and say that, you know, um, somewhere along the line, we will have to address this if it's not coming forward, far, you know, fast and uh, fast enough. Because otherwise, we will we might lose the, the capabilities of the NEL. Just on your resp or response, whether we're encroaching on the executive? No, I don't think so. I think it's uh, it's not a prescription to them. It is an initiative by us to look at the at the, at the uh, defence capabilities and how things are affecting. The, you know, the, the SNDF going forward. So, uh, because we don't need to uh, encroach on the on the executive, but we need to do our work. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that part. Um, the, the first part that you have mentioned is not just about the electricity, uh, but it's just how the conditions under which those, those vehicles are stored and, you know, the lack of electricity, how that is affecting the defense readiness. Um, of those vehicles and equipment, and uh, you know, I, I think a report back on that will be, will 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 obviously put us into a position and see how severe the electricity um, uh, uh, deficit or the or the lack of electricity is in Valmansdal, and you know what we need to do. You know, it might be in our best interest to invest in generators to make sure that those storage facilities at least are kept you know at the optimum um climatical situation so that um, so that we don't lose that or must spend an enormous lot of money on maintaining them um in terms of of defense readiness so okay so yeah so so we'll, we'll express that as a concern yeah and 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 just require a request then maybe to give us feedback at one stage about the conditions um, of those vehicles where there's no electricity uh, because it's, it's and that at some point they must give us uh, feedback yeah. on the conditions um, of those vehicles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, I noted that, uh, Mr. Daniels. Um, yes, Chair. Thank you. I've got a Chair. Yeah, but but on the on the status of denial, I think let's leave it at where Tabo is leaving it. Uh, yeah, Mr. that's why I said uh, yeah. as long as we just identify that going forward, that we right. no no we will discuss that going forward. No no that's fine uh, that's fine. But that with that I will, I will propose for the acceptance of the report. We propose for the acceptance. All right, uh, Tabo has seconded it. Tabo, agreed. Agreed, Chair. Thank you so much. Colleagues, um, I've presented the report to you, and uh, Mr. Mare moved it, and uh, Honorable, Mute, uh, Honorable Mare moved it, Honorable Mute seconded it. That, therefore, uh, uh, means that our report is adopted and uh, for onward transmission to Parliament. Uh, all right, colleagues, thank you very much for, for the deliberations. All right, uh, Tabo, thank you very much for uh, standing in for me when I was unable to do so. Uh, thank you so much. All right, colleagues, can we then move to the next item? Uh, the minutes. Mr. Shalemba, you want to say something? Why, Chairperson, because you are still showing, I mean, uh, the minutes and you want me to say something. No. Why can't you, why can't no. you wait? I saw you, you, you're taking the screen, I'm sorry. Um, all right. Uh, Brian, you like this CV. Uh, maybe when you draft the minutes, you think uh, of your CV a lot. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, colleagues, uh, these are the minutes uh, of the 25th of May, uh, 22. Um, so, uh, discussing progress in relation to DOD cases of fraud and corruption and consequence management. And then we looked at the 2021 uh, re report. 
in the annual uh, performance of the committee and we adopted the minutes. Right, this was the attendance, colleagues. Uh, we now pay, let's pay attention to uh, the minutes. Uh, right, uh, let's go down. Uh, uh, go down. Uh, page three. Uh, page four. Page five. Colleagues, are there any corrections? All right. Uh, are there any corrections that you want to uh, effect from page one to the last page? All right. It doesn't look, doesn't look like there's any correction. Colleagues, I now present the minutes uh, for adoption. Uh, I move the uh, chair for adoption. Uh, Honorable Mutia <laughs> moves for adoption. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Chelembe, uh, seconds. Colleagues, thank you very much. The minutes are adopted. Brian, thank you very much once again uh, for the good work. All right. Um, colleagues, I think we have come to the end. Uh, are, we, are we not at the end of the meeting, uh, Brian? Indeed, we are, sir. Okay, it's 22 one. Uh, at one o'clock, I will be attending a meeting of the chairs of the, of, of the committees. Colleagues, thank you very much for attendance. It was a really productive meeting today. And um, I appreciate uh, your attendance and your participation until we meet again. And uh, thank thanks to the support team. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thanks. Recording stopped.